Hello and welcome to Macroeconomics. This chapter we will be discussing monetary policy, specifically the Federal Reserve and the macroeconomy. Monetary policy are the actions taken by a country's central bank. In the United States, the central bank is the Federal Reserve. A country faces a series of choices on what goals a central bank can achieve. We call this the monetary trilemma, and we have a triangle. Number one, can you have capital mobility? This means can the money move across borders? Can you easily purchase assets in other countries? And can other countries purchase purchase assets in yours. Monetary autonomy is the ability for the central bank to respond to local domestic recessions. So if you have a recession happening in your country, can you offer easy monetary policy to help stimulate the economy? Or are you tied to the macro economies of other countries? Finally, can you have a pegged exchange rate? Many central banks around the world use their tools to make sure the exchange rate between them and another country remain at a certain level to help facilitate favorable trade conditions. Now a country can have two out of these three. For example, if you want free movement of financial capital, as well as the ability for the central bank to help the domestic economy, you'll see something like we have in the United States. Now notice in the US, we do not have a pegged exchange rate. The dollar is a floating exchange rate in the world's economy. On the bottom side, having domestic monetary autonomy, as well as a relatively pegged exchange rate, we would see the country of China. They engage in a lot of trade in the rest of the world and their macro economy is dependent upon trade, so they use their monetary policy to make sure that exchange rate stays a certain amount. And the opposite side of that corner, China does not have capital mobility. It is very difficult to move money into the country as well as moving money out of the country. Finally, on the other side, having a pegged exchange rate, but also having capital mobility would be a country like Switzerland. Those Swiss banks cater to a lot of international clients. They want it very easy for money to come in and out of the country. And we can see this in the data. The red line is telling us the share of exports in domestic GDP for the country of Switzerland. For the past 15 years, that has been over 60%. The blue line tells us imports, also well over 50% of the domestic economy. In comparison, let's look at the United States. Similar to Switzerland, we do see the rise of globalization over the second half of the 20th century. However, the magnitudes for the US are so much smaller. Imports as a share of GDP are around 12 to 15 percent, whereas exports are over 10 percent. A significant part of our economy, but when we are discussing what a central bank should target to help an economy, Switzerland is giving up domestic monetary autonomy, but it is gaining a pegged exchange rate. And because trade is so much more important for Switzerland's macroeconomy, this makes a lot more sense. Whereas for the US, trade is important, but it's a much smaller portion of the economy. So for the United States central bank to target exchange rates would have a smaller effect than if it were to target recessions and other domestic concerns. I have another little thought experiment with this. Think about the United States, all 50 of them, plus the territories. What kind of monetary policy does each individual state have? Well, because we use the same currency, we have a pegged exchange rate between the states. Uh, and what about capital mobility? Yeah, you can freely move money from across states. This is enshrined in the constitution. You just take the money from state to state. Uh, but what about individual state monetary autonomy, it doesn't exist. If California is experiencing a recession, there is nothing the California government can do. They don't even have a central bank. There is no monetary ability to change the interest rate just in the state of California to help out the Californian recession. They're completely tied with the macro economy of the other 49 states and territories. So this begs a question. When should a country have the exact same currency as their neighbors? When should we have a currency union? The 50 United States are unique and different and diverse, and yet generally having everybody under the same currency union is working out. This was a question approached by Robert Mundell, and he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Economics back in 1999. His work started back in the 1960s. He argued that it could be advantageous for several countries to introduce a common currency, but only under certain conditions, specifically when the labor force had a great deal of mobility. So for example, in the United States, people move from state to state all the time. A significant portion of our population currently resides in a different state than the one they were born in. But Mundell's early theories and empirical work had relevance for the introduction of the euro as the European Union's currency. Also since 1999, Europe introduced the euro as a common currency in much of the continent. So similar to Switzerland, which still has its own Swiss franc, each individual state such as France, Germany, Spain, Ireland, all have a perfectly pegged exchange rate. And they all have relatively free capital mobility inside the European currency. But what it means is that if an individual country is experiencing 
experiencing a recession, more severe and harsher than the rest of Europe, the Greek central bank, for example, does not have the ability to change the interest rates inside that country in a strong enough way to satisfy the needs of the macro economy. And therefore, it behooves the entire European Union's central authority to help redistribute and bail out individual countries and maintain a cohesive macro economy among all of them. The hesitancy to do this in 2012 led to a tremendous amount of economic suffering in Greece, all of which could have been prevented had the other European countries offered the necessary loans to help stabilize the Greek macro economy. Here's a recent paper that's explored this, Macroeconomics of the Greek Depression. It specifically found that contractionary tax policy, meaning high taxes and large budget cuts in Greece, plays the most important role in the bust in production, contributing an 18 percentage point decline in output. So that's one of the preventable negative trade-offs of joining a common currency. The benefits, on the other hand, are extraordinary. More trade, more mobility, more economic activity, easier transactions across countries, and more geopolitical power as the euro is one of the major world reserve currencies. Tune into the next video where we're getting to the nuts and bolts of the Federal Reserve System.